So a lot of us hear the truth about it. analysis and the proper treatment of quantum presented and invited to. And it, was a, it was a real eye-opener for me to hear all the uh, presentations at that meeting. Um, so Montague's work, of course, has been very influential since then, uh, but it had some features that Pat thought were undesirable. And uh, one of them was that he really felt that the uh, semantic analysis Montague gave fit the syntax of natural languages very awkwardly. Um, and that was further reflected in the fact that it seemed to require the use of individual variables and sentences where they don't actually occur. And uh, so Pat felt needs a full or mellow like hierarchy of sets for the model structure of ordinary sentences of English. So those do seem to be really uh, um, complications of a kind you might prefer to avoid in giving a semantics for natural language. Um, Pat's papers argued that instead there was a, you, we should be pursuing a sort of algebraic semantics, which would have obvious advantages in efficiency and computing meanings, and would avoid artificially escalating the semantic types of expressions. He found, however, though, he, he frankly confessed that it was, as he presented it, at odds with established thinking about the syntax of natural languages. So uh, he ended up uh, assigning tree structures like the uh, top one here to sentences of the form, say, all freshmen date some juniors where there is no noun phrase comprising all freshmen or some juniors as uh, syntacticians would generally argue there, there should be based on considerations like the fact that if, if a sequence such as all freshmen can replace another sequence like some juniors um, at any occurrence without disturbing the grammaticality of the sentence in which the substitution was made, then these two uh, expressions are of the same syntactic type, and we ought to recognize that they constitute a phrase in the sentences for the grammatical description of these things. But Pat argued that, in fact, there was a conflict between trying to give an algebraic semantics and uh, recognizing that sort of phrase structure and felt, uh, I think, uh, and for very good reasons that uh, there were many advantages of trying to give it give such uh, a semantics. So in particular, he aimed at uh, presenting the semantics to interpret English in an extended relation algebra. Um, basically an algebra of sets, uh, unary and binary relations over a domain that are, constitute a Boolean algebra and are closed <laughs> under certain other operations like the uh, uh, inverse and composition of relations and a certain kind of image operation combining relations with sets. Um, and he argued that uh, such an algebra doesn't actually provide adequate denotations for uh, interpreting all the quantified noun phrases in a language. In fact, uh, they uh, really don't, uh, they're not even adequate denotations for all the, what you might call, syllogistic noun phrases, the ones whose determinants are things like every, um, some, no. Um, so I think uh, his argument to that effect is actually very, a very important thing for semanticists generally to appreciate. There have been many arguments over the course of history of under, trying to understand quantification in uh, various natural languages as to what phrases like um, all freshmen or some juniors might denote, if anything. Um, and uh, Pat's paper contains the gem of an, uh, an interesting fact that allows, of interesting facts, that allow them to prove that they cannot denote sets or individuals. Um, you can actually uh, construct a rigorous proof of this. 
starting just from the truth conditions that the sentences must have, and then making the assumption that we want to interpret the meanings of the sentences compositionally, so that whatever denotation all A's or some A's may have, they would contribute in the same way to uh, the compo semantic composition of the truth conditions of the sentences. And from there, actually, a, quite a simple combinatorial argument allows you to prove that these conditions require um, a sufficiently large number of denotations to be available for the phrases that there aren't enough sets and individuals around in any finite domain to provide those denotations. In infinite domains, uh, you, can, uh, 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 you need more than the simple cardinality argument because you can do play coding tricks uh, that would actually encode the denotations in the available sets, and uh, so you'd need additional properties <coughs> beyond these things like uh, I, um, isomorphism invariance or conservativity. <coughs> But um, uh, I, I find this uh, result really a, a remarkably interesting one because it really depends only on um, two very simple quantifiers, the universal and existential one, the, uh, and two simple assumptions. One is that the uh, meanings are to be interpreted compositionally, and the other is that in principle, these predicates that are expressed by nouns or verbs can denote any subset of the domain over which uh, the language is being interpreted. So that's, that's a, 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 an interestingly general result, and it, I hope it gives you some feel for why, um, in the sort of extended relation algebra that Pat was employing, it's impossible to uh, provide denotations for these noun phrases. So um, how should we respond? Should we jettison the syntactic uh, result, or should we perhaps uh, look for a slightly further extended relation algebra that in which such interpretation might be possible? Well, I, I think it's interesting to explore the latter idea. So along with um, um, in-area relations, of, of the first order, we might uh, allow ourselves to consider uh, second order MRE relations. Uh, in this particular case, they all have 